Welcome at tutorial number 68 of the EEP10 model railway simulator. In the previous videos we have been working on the universal method, a stepwise uh, method for designing EEP control circuits. We did try it out on a demo layout and in the last video I promised that we were going to test it also on a totally different layout and that is the subject of this video. We're going to design a control circuit for the dual track junction layout that maybe you have seen it is used in video 44 also. In video 44 uh, we built a protection for that using a matrix system but right now we are going to build a, a control circuit with our new universal design method. So let's have a picture of that layout, that's this layout, a, a single loop that becomes two tracks over here and then we have a two track junction and uh, we have four trains running it, uh, on it, uh, so if we don't protect this uh, area over here we will have a lot of collisions. Well, let us have a look with our design spreadsheet uh, which traffic we are going to allow. So I am going to open the spreadsheet with those four columns that we discussed in previous video. And uh, we are simply going to have a look which traffic we want to allow in this layout. Let's start here at West 1. So let me fill in from West 1. Where can I go to? Well, the train is running in this direction, so it can actually only go to the next signal, which is called West 2. It's just a name, you can name them uh, any way you like. From West 2, the train can go on, but the only place it can go to is West 3. Let me note that down, West 2 goes to West 3. West 3, that's an interesting one, because now there are two choices. Uh, I have two, two possibilities. I can go down here to East 1. So let me write that down. West can go to East 1. Or I can go straight on and then I am going to East 3. So this is going to call later for a random push in control. The I'm going to push the train into an empty track. Well, uh, why, why not write that down already uh, so that we don't forget it. This is a push in control that we need. Push in. Uh, because we have two trains coming, uh, two possibilities for a train coming from West 3. Alright, let's go on. Let's start at East 1. Where am I going to? I'm going to East 2. Well, that is uh, easy to write down. And then we also had the possibility that I was in East 3 and then I am going on to East 4. East 3 can only go to East 4. No control needed for that, just a normal block control. But now it becomes interesting again, because now suppose I have a train here waiting at East 2 and at the same time I have a train waiting here at East 4. Uh, well, suppose that there is a train here at West 1 that is leaving this block, then uh, I can pull out one of the possible two trains. So from East 2 I can go to West 1. And also from East 4 I can go to West 1. So this calls for a pull out, a random pull out circuit, so that we make a random selection out of two trains that are possibly available here. Alright, well we already discovered that we need two random circuits, one push in and one push out. And now let's have a look, do we also need some single track protection somewhere? Well, we were having this crossing of two tracks and obviously we need to do something about that. So let us have a look which uh, from two trajectories are using that cross. Well, obviously West 3 to East 3 is going over that cross. So let me name our protection cross. And also uh, this one, East 4 going to west 1 is going over that cross. 
So let me look it up. East 4 to West 1 is going over that cross. That covers the cross. Only two uh, trajectories are using it. Then the next question is, we also have a join. The join of two, the blue uh, arrows over here, are joining together on one track. Do I need to protect that, is the question. Well, the answer is actually no need for that. Because there can only be one train at a time over here. The, 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 the West 1 is pulling a train out, and if two trains are available, it selects one randomly. So only one of the two will go, and the other one will simply wait until it is selected later. So I don't no, do not need to protect it. I think this is enough protection. Well, now that we have written down the broad design, let us write down the detailed design. What I found out is I need a single track protection, single track called cross, and what do I need inside? I need two pillars, we can see that over here, and those are uh, these ones, west 3 to east 3 is one pillar, and the other one is east 4 to west 1, east 4 to west 1. I'm going to design it, to build it later on the, on the, on the layout, just like that. Then we have a random uh, push in, well it does not need a name, we have only one of those, that is west 3 to east 1 and beside that we have west 3 to east 3. Eh, I just listed these two. They will be on a straight uh, lane with a control car that is going to change direction and then we have only two uh, signals over there that say the track is free or the track is occupied. Then we have a random pull out and that is E2 to west 1 and the other one was E4 to west 1. I'm going to build that exactly in this uh, way and of course need to take care that I use the right sensors. Now there is a, a link between the random control and the cross, that link is west 3 east C. you see though they are mentioned both. So west 3 east 3 let me give that a little color, that has to, uh, cannot open its signal immediately, it has to do a request to the single track. And also this one, let me give that another color, uh, east 4 to west 1, also has to place a request at the single track. So in two situations I can just open up the signal, because there's only one, uh, one way to go. Uh, uh, the in two other situations I need to do a request at the single track, and I think if all is, is built according to this detailed design, then it will work. So, let us skip the building phase, because that will take another two or three or four videos and that will become quite boring. I will just uh, show you that I built what was designed here and that was built in EEP and it looks like this and let's go to full uh, page view we have over here the random uh, pool circuit if a train leaves over here then it pulls out one of the available trains over here you see it just pulled out this steam engine then we have over here our push random push uh, control if a train comes in over here and it is here then it uh, wants to select a free track that is uh, going straight forward or going here in the band um, and uh, then we have here our single track protection that was to protect this railroad cross here uh, well and that is uh, triggered, the requests come from these random uh, pool and random push uh, control circuits. Uh, and well, we can, uh, you can have a look, the, the, the layout is included in the download that goes with the text with this video. And uh, I suggest that if you would like to, to, to find out how it works, 
with all the previous videos that th I, I hope that is a little bit clear. You can just uh, see which signals, uh, which sensors are used where, and it is not overly complex, but I also realize it is not really easy uh, to dive into someone else's uh, control circuits. The only thing that I wanted to make clear with this whole uh, series of videos is there is a universal way of working and you only need a random in random out control which look like this plus you need sometimes single track control which is done with pillars and those are the only two controls you need to automate a layout and I am not going to promise that every layout can be automated but I think almost every layout uh, will 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 be able to be controlled this way and the whole fun of it is you can do the whole design a broad design and a detailed design without building anything you can just put it in a spreadsheet and already see what you need okay let's just wait uh, a few seconds uh, a minute and see the traffic going here I think this was uh, enough to have an idea to see what's happening if you really like to delve in then it's uh, yeah you should have a look at the sensors inside these control circuits okay see you later in a next video where maybe probably we're going to do yet again another layout using the same design idea <laughs>